This is a five minute exercise which will improve your drawing at whatever level of drawing you're currently at. And it's drawing a five minute, very quick, small sketch. Let me explain and show using these three references here for three five minute drawings. The first one I'll show you in real time so you can see exactly how fast we have to think and commit to finish something in five minutes. The second two I've sped up to double time, but with all three, I'll be voicing over with observations and tips. For these first two, the drawing in the video is actually the second attempt at drawing that reference that I made because I wasn't happy with the first go. At the end of the video, I'll show you the first and second efforts side by side, and I'll explain what I learned which helped me improve the second time. So that's at the very end. Five minutes is a very short period of time, and it may work better for your learning to set something between five and 10 minutes, but don't go beyond 10 minutes, or else you won't have the time pressure which can be so valuable in pushing our improvement in our drawing. And whatever time you choose, you have to be really brutal about sticking to that time limit. There's no point in doing a five minute drawing in 20 minutes. It becomes something else and doesn't give us the benefit that a five minute drawing does. So here's a few general points that apply to drawing in five minutes, and then we'll look at the first real time drawing. The first thing to do before we draw is to pick a focus in our scene. Now this may be a subject or it may be a particular visual effect of contrast or shape or outline. But because the five minutes will go so quickly, we need to have this focus of this thing that we want to capture clear in our minds from the word go. We need to take a moment to think what will be the best place to start in a super quick five minute sketch starting in the center of the part I want to capture is probably going to be the best place. Because that way, I make sure I spend my time drawing the key part of the scene. But within that center, it's still best to choose something which will give us a confident start, something that's relatively easy to draw and to get correct proportions. And it's also important to decide at the start, am I going to use any tone at all? Or will I do this entirely in line? In the first two examples, I do use tone. Marker tone is a great way to get a lot of tonal effect very quickly. Hatching takes time that we're probably not going to have in a five minute drawing. So let's go to our five minute real time quick drawing, the entrance to the Art Gallery of New South Wales in Sydney. And if you'd like to have a go at drawing any or all of these five minute sketches, then these three reference photos will be on my community page if you want to go there and get them. This colonnaded entrance is clearly the main focus of this drawing, so it's the obvious place to start. The important thing is to try and get the proportions correct, not to let this triangular pediment be too high, to get this entablature the correct height. I'm normally so focused on getting proportions correct, it's very hard not to slow down too much. And then we have the columns, looking at how many there are. There's double columns on each end and then there's two in the center. So trying to work out how to position these columns, I, I do place some little marks. It's not that I get these marks correct, but I then use them to actually draw the outlines. I spend way too much time on this time that I would have liked to have had at the end. And I just now suggest the fact that these are ionic columns with a few circular scrolls, trying to define a bit more where the actual columns are and then drawing this advertising section. So I've given a quick uh, reminder of myself that there's a tree in this corner. It also means I can stop my lines a little bit before it, so I actually don't get bogged down in trying to draw detail. That's just not necessary. Now, one of the challenges with this drawing is the foreground elements, the traffic lights, and particularly these cars that, although they're not overly in front of the building, they are important for a sense of scale and for depth. 
they show us that we are some distance. They give us a sense of what sort of distance we are. I'm trying to draw these vehicles quickly. Drawing cars is not a big strength of mine. So I try and not think of them as cars, just see them as shapes and try and copy those shapes. I'm so aware of how fast the time is going at this point. My, my cars are a bit flattened, but I'm really not going to let that worry me too much. I really just want to get a sense of there are cars here to give a sense of this is a roadway and intersection in front of the art gallery. The columns, hopefully by the time I put the contrast in tones on with the marker in the last minute, will become very much the focus. I've decided not to try and use the pen to put these windows in place. I'll use the tone to do that at the end. Again, this is why it's important to know whether we're going to use tone or not, because tone will be a much faster way to get uh, a dark area covered than trying to do it hatching with lines. A few more cars now on the other side of the street. I don't have the time I want to take to line them all up and to check the scale of each of them in relation to each other. And now I realize I haven't really indicated this big old palm tree here. And I'm so pushed for time that I do no more than give the barest indication. I'm using three tones, which I think is probably the most we can juggle within our head in a five minute drawing. Basically a lighter, a mid-tone and a darker. This is my Copic N6 sketch marker, which is the darkest tone I'm going to be using in this drawing. So I pop these windows in just with a straight line each. Use it for some of the darker spaces in the portico and then some of the, the darker local color and shaded areas of these cars. So that's enough. So I'm jumping now to the four. I waste time taking the wrong end off. Although the front of the building actually is in shade in this drawing, I'm not going to represent that. I'll just use the, the tone for the darkest areas, not for all of them. I'm feeling so pressed for time at this point. But because the portico is the focal area, I will spend a little more time there just trying to get those tones in place, trying to get a sense of the, the different values. And I realize there's the tree here, but fortunately you, you can do foliage quickly if you need to. It really is just to suggest it. And then my five minute sketch is done. There's actually more in this scene. It might look fairly similar, but it is more complex in terms of the various architectural elements that need to be drawn. As well as this column portico, there is a, a dome and a drum behind it, as well as more architectural elements to each side. And we still have vehicles in the front, which I think are fairly important to capture. I use the same method for the columns here to just indicate spacing, and then I use those indications to commit straight off then to the columns. I want to give some indication of what's happening behind the colonnade at the front. I'm really wanting to get the proportions as close as I can for this colonnade in terms of the height of the columns versus the width of the entire portico. I'm really having to resist the urge to draw too many details because I really enjoy drawing the details it goes against my natural drawing technique to leave things too loose. But that's something I would work on if I were wanting to do a lot of five minute drawings. I didn't quite align this drum, the width of this drum, well with the colonnade. That's probably something I would have given another two seconds to if I could go back. So it's a little bit too large for the building underneath it. And this dome goes up a little bit too high. 
I often have a problem of flattening domes and I think I was trying to not fall into that pattern. Now my dome actually comes out too far across the smaller drum that supports it. I do correct that um, after I turn the camera off, but you, I think you'll get to see that. I now put a row of the, these lamps in. They're quite good because they reinforce the perspective angles. I know with these sides, I know with these buildings on the sides, I really can only barely suggest what's happening there. But the perspective is important because that will give a sense of the angles and the sizes. I'm feeling the pressure to switch to the tone now. I haven't quite got those buildings on the right tall enough and that adds to the feeling that the Pantheon is larger than it should be in its position. Now I want to indicate the shade of the street over there. You can see how fast I'm drawing here. Again indicating some of the architectural detail and now the vehicles with the tone. I wanted to say something about the windows on the fronts of these buildings at least to put them in a few spaces so that our mind could just presume that they're in the other spaces. And that's all I had time for. Our third subject is St Mary's, a neo-Gothic Roman Catholic cathedral in Sydney. And the focus I want to capture in my very brisk drawing is something of the visual elements of the Gothic architecture. So let's have a go. With this much detail, I'm taking my advice and starting in the centre so that I give myself every chance of including the scope of this scene. So if these pinnacles, spires and whatnot are going to be part of my focus of the drawing, then I do want to try and make sure that I get the scale, their relative proportions and scale and heights to each other correct. Still, there's only so much time I can spend on glancing at things for alignment rather than actual drawing. There is a fair bit of detail in this centre left section of the reference and so I decide I'm not going to have time to try and work out architecturally exactly what's happening. I really need to draw the effect of the shapes. So I'm not sure at the end whether all these things actually joined up to each other in the correct way and decided that I just didn't have time to ensure that that was the case. Because it is the effect, the line work is going to be so brisk that no one's going to be overly concerned about what joins with what because many lines won't join with anything. And this is part of the freedom of doing these very fast five minute sketches. It gives us a focus that lets us think differently and this is very stimulating for our drawing for our artwork both in these five minute sketches but also when we go back to drawing in our normal time frame now i'm drawing this section without any tone because i did think that only line would suit this although i do then go on to add tone after the five minutes is up so i've included that here as well so you can see the effect of adding tone but i actually quite like the line work. I think line work does suit Gothic structures very much because they are so linear in so many ways. There are so many vertical lines close together and little bobbles and other things that can be drawn quite effectively with pen. So some very quick hints for this tree and trying to just put the major architectural elements that I've missed because I can see that my five minutes is just about up. In fact, it is up now and so I switch to the marker and I spend maybe a minute and a half to two minutes putting marker on in real time. I'm really wanting, wanting to create a sense of sunlight on the building as, as well as highlight some of the architectural elements with shading but the building is relatively plain for a gothic neo-gothic structure and so it really is more to indicate the direction of the sun and therefore a bit more of a three-dimensionality to the scene. I'm mostly using a four here 
N4 for this. And then there's just a final bit of tone for the local color of the tree and of the roofs. Well, if this is more my usual style of drawing, what's the benefit then of instead of doing a drawing in six hours, I draw in five minutes? The benefit is the very fact that it's going to be such a different drawing experience. It shakes up significantly all the patterns, all the ways of thinking that I have. And particularly if my usual drawing style is very precise and rather time intensive, it pushes me to take risks with my line work, to focus on something other than exactness. And because line work is one of the, if not the key visual element of our drawing, anything that encourages us to bring vitality, to bring life into our line work is going to be good. Anything that gives us a different focus from our usual focus, because of some sort of external pressure, in this case a time limit we put on ourselves is going to be helpful to break us out of old patterns and habits and to let us experience and think about new things and it's those new things that we think about and that perhaps even our drawings experience that we can take back into other drawings that we do although i must confess as i'm standing here looking at this i'm increasingly alarmed at the slope on these two end columns well these are the two drawings where these are actually my second five minute attempts. What went wrong with my first five minute attempts? Let me show you. So this was my first one. And the main reason I wasn't happy with it was that I got the proportions of this entrance wrong. The entrance portico is taller than it is wider. And this was more of a horizontal squarish emphasis. And I thought that was a big enough error to be worth doing again with that as a stronger focus. And by redrawing it with a stronger focus, firstly, I was able to make sure that I did get the proportions better captured, but it also let me leave out some detail that I'd included in this drawing that gave me more time to draw other elements that I ended up thinking were more important. My second drawing became larger as well, which would have taken more time but it was also relatively faster because of the observational memory I still had from this drawing immediately before. For my Pantheon drawing the proportions of this drum in proportion to the building and the dome on top were just too wrong and the dome itself looked like it had been slapped on crookedly with an overall drunken effect so when I drew it the second time I had the focus of not letting this colonnaded drum become too tall for the overall proportions of the building, although it still is slightly too tall. I also pushed my dome up a little higher than I had in this one, which I was aware was too squat, although the better choice would have been a height something between the two. If we look at the reference, we can see just how far out of scale of proportion this colonnaded drum is. There is a much broader, a much more stable platform in the actual architecture. And so if you don't like your five minute drawing, then draw another five minute drawing straight after. This really is a way to increase the improvement we get in our general drawing from these five minute exercises. Because we come with a clearer idea second time round on what we need to focus on to get a better result. And it's only another five minutes to improve our drawing by this much. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I love doing these sorts of drawings, but they can take a time commitment and a concentration that we don't always have. They're also a technique which really is not very practical for location sketching. Learning to do quick five minute sketches introduces so many helpful things into our drawing. Why not commit to the discipline and the frustration of some five minute sketches and start to learn some of the freedoms and the different focus that drawing in this way can bring to our regular drawing, whatever it might look like. I hope this was interesting and helpful and don't forget, if you want to have a go, I've posted the three reference photos I've used 
on my community page so you can go to them there. Whatever you draw and however long you draw it in, make sure you have fun. See you next time. Bye.